Hey there! Welcome to Jimmy's Records and Tapes. I'm Jimmy Pardo. This week I'm talking about my five favorite TV show themes. We've got it on vinyl, CD and cassette. We've got pop, rock, heavy metal, punk, funk, rap, and new wave. All sales are final, but you'll never regret all the music you get at Jimmy's Records and Tapes. Hi everybody, welcome in. You're watching this on YouTube, which is the TV of the future and of the now. But today I'm talking about my top five favorite TV show themes. TV shows used to have nice opening credits. They don't really so much anymore. Oh, you know what? Uh, Ted Lasso does. It's got that nice opening with the uh, that Mumford and Son guy uh, doing this. And I don't like the Mumford and Sons. I'm not a big fan, but I do like the theme of Ted Lasso. Uh, does it make the top five? No. Too soon. Too soon. Nothing current. On here, you have nostalgia for TV themes. You you bought the album that KTEL made. You know, KTEL's uh, 12 greatest TV show themes. And then you, uh, you they would show you a little imagery uh, uh, in the commercial. And then you would uh, you'd go buy it, maybe for $5.99. And you had all of your favorite TV show themes. Were they always done by the originals? No, most often not. They were uh, done by uh, session people. And you go, boy, that sounds a little like Laverne and Shirley, but it doesn't really sound like Laverne and Shirley. Guess what? Because it's not. It's a couple of ladies making a couple of bucks doing a session. And why not? They deserve it. They work hard. They sing back up for Steely Dan on, on Pretzel Logic. Why shouldn't they get the chance to shine on the Laverne and Shirley theme? Are any of those facts true? Nope. Made up the whole scenario. Made it all up. 100% made up. I don't even know if there's a backup vocals on uh, Pretzel Logic. There might not be a single lady voice on that album. I don't know. But if there was, I'll be damned if it's not those ladies who covered the Laverne and Shirley theme. Let's get to the countdown. Let's get to the countdown. Is that good at all? Uh, I'm Casey Case. Let's get to... Nope. Oh, I've just been told thumbs up. Uh, here's why I'm doing TV show things, by the way. The gentleman who just gave me the thumbs up was not Arthur Fonzarelli, but one Elliot Hochberg, uh, who edits and puts up these little graphics. Maybe right over there, he's putting up a picture of him. If I know anything about him, he's not doing that because he hates the way he looks. Don't we all? Don't we all? I've chosen a medium where it's photographs and memories. I, I'm walking in the steps of Jim Croce, where I make my living for the most part in front of a camera, and I hate the way I look. Should I work this out in therapy and not during a top five countdown of Elliot Hochberg's uh, choosing of TV show themes? Yes, I should. I'll go talk to, I'll get back with Dr. Kimberly and, uh, and work this through. Now, let's start it down. TV show themes. Number five, this is my dad's favorite show of all time, and the song is great. The Ventures, 1969, went to number four on the charts. What is it? You know it. Hawaii Five-O. It's going to be a lot of that, this episode. It's going to be a lot of that. Great song, right? Got that wave coming in, and then you got the, uh, the hair of Jack Lord. Oh, Buh, buh come down, oh! Says uh, everybody that meets a guy named Dan at least once in their life, they say, book him Dan or that guy. And I got to imagine uh, one day we're going to go to a prison and it's going to be full of guys named Dan because they murdered people because they were called, they were uh, uh, said to book him one too many times. Number four, theme from SWAT. Great song, are you kidding me? 1976, went to number one on the charts. Rhythm Heritage did it. Um, Steve Forrest was the um, star of SWAT, and uh, he once made a, an appearance, a personal appearance, at the Toys R Us near our house. And uh, my dad was kind enough to bring me and my brother. We waited three hours in line to meet the guy who starred in SWAT. If my son wants to spend one minute in a board game shop, I want to throw myself off a building. My dad was nice enough to wait in line to meet Steve Forrest from SWAT. So number four, theme from SWAT. Great. Two instrumentals right out of the box. You guys know I love a vocal. Boy, nothing more than those two ladies singing the Laverne and Shirley theme on the KTEL album. Those ladies have beautiful voices. Wouldn't it be great if somebody did research by that, maybe the guy that hosts, uh, and you find out that those are very famous people now? That'd be fun to know. I'm guessing they're not. Number three, counting them down. Five Hawaii Five-O. Four, theme from SWAT. Number three, Sammy Davis Jr., not the old man, sang it. 
Went to number 20 in the charts, 1976, Bicentennial. Let's paint everything red, white, and blue. Let's love this country, Jimmy Carter style. The theme from Beretta. Keep your eye on the sparrow. Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. Yeah. Don't do it. And keep your eye on the sparrow. Yeah. Fun fact. Uh, Robert Blake may have murdered somebody. Also, I have his autograph. Uh, when I was a kid, I mailed a letter to Robert Blake uh, at his home in um, Los Angeles, California. And he wrote me back. Or a secretary did. Uh, but with a nice letter actually answering the things that I said in my letter to him. And he uh, actually, in the letter, reprimanded my parents for allowing us to stay up late enough to watch his violent show. He judged my parents from afar. And that, what did I get him? Time in prison, friends. That's what happened. Learn your lesson, Blake. I loved Robert Blake. Why? Because he was a tiny guy. I loved him in Electric Light and Blue. And I loved him in Beretta because he was always a little guy. And I was a little guy. And I uh, wore a little hat like he did, a little cabbie hat. And uh, I had a, a bird that I would talk to on a regular basis outside uh, named Fred. I love Beretta. And the song is just great. And uh, who doesn't quote that song to this day? Anybody in my age bracket, right? Don't do the crime. You can't do the time. We all say it. We all love it. Uh, then that Johnny Cochran kind of stole his thunder with the, uh, if, it, if the glove don't fit, you must have quit. Kind of stole Beretta's thunder. Number two. Kind of got sad there for a moment, didn't I? Number two, a band called Alabama Three. I don't know anything about these guys, but they do the theme from The Sopranos. And uh, that's a great song, right? Love it. Can I sing it right now for you? I can't because I still have uh, Beretta's theme in my head. But, um, uh, don't go to Britain. Nope. I just sang Beretta again. I can't get out of it. Look it up on your own. The theme from, uh, the theme from Sopranos is great. And you know what? I know it's cliche. It's gotta be in the top five TV shows of all time. And, uh, it's worthy of the, I wonder if the upcoming movie, which may or not uh, be out by the time you see this, I wonder if that gets played at all in the movie. That'd be interesting to know. The only one way to find out goes through that movie with Gandolfini's kid who spookily looks and sounds just like him. Now, let's talk about a couple of uh, things that did not make the top five. And once again, some could argue, then Jim, what's the point of a five, top five, if you're going to add other ones to it? Because I, I get lost in, in thought when I'm putting these together. You got the trifecta by Mike Post. Rockford Files, NYPD Blue, Hill Street Blues, all great, right? And then he went on to uh, produce Van Halen, and uh, people didn't like that album. Because uh, uh, no rocker wanted to hear a guy who uh, did the Hill Street Blues theme produce the rock gods. Miami Vice theme is good by Jan Hammer. Uh, what about the Chuck Burhofer, who, uh, whose wonderful bass line is in Barney Miller? What are my feet doing? What are my legs doing? My legs uh, started doing something that uh, no drummer's ever done in their entire life. Maybe they, maybe they did with a double bass. You don't know. Pratt McLean, of course, with Happy Days, the Batman theme. Uh, Flatten Scruggs did the Ballad of Je uh, Jed Clampett. Making It by David Naughton, the guy from American World from London, and the Pepper. He had, a, he had a hit song. Went to number five in 1979 from his TV show called Making It. Anyway, those are all fine songs. They're all fun. They probably were all on that KTEL album that I won't stop talking about. But my number one, and this is fun. We were once playing poker. Uh, and my dad was playing. There's a bunch of my friends here in Los Angeles, and we were playing poker, and somebody brought up the name of John Sebastian. Uh, in fact, that gentleman's name was Chip Chinnery. And Chip said, I heard John Sebastian just passed away. And my dad said, no way did he pass away. And they bet, I want to say, $1,000 on it. I might be high by about 990 bucks, But they bet money on it, and this was kind of in the early days of the internet, so looking it up wasn't the easiest thing in the world, but somebody did find that John Sebastian was in fact alive and cheap, uh, Chip Chinnery um, had to pay my dad some money and my dad took it. And rightfully so, you look, don't do the crime, you can't pay the time. Don't do it. Did I get any of those words right? <laughs> I don't think I did. <laughs> Talking about the theme from Welcome Back, Cotter. Welcome back. Your dreams were your ticket out to welcome back. He, of course, was in Love and Spoonful as well, John Sebastian. Hot time, summer of the city, back of my neck, dirt and gritty. Uh, anyway, number one, Welcome Back by John Sebastian. I had that on 45. I want to say it was on Reprise Records. If I'm wrong, 
uh, uh, write to me, uh, uh, fanclub at jimmyparto.com, and let me know. But just know this, by the time your email gets to me, I would have already had the information because I'm going to look it up as soon as I'm done here so I don't look stupid when you end up writing me. Hey, everybody, it's time for this week's Jimmy's Choice. comes to us from at S-A-Chimps, S-A-C-H-I-M-P-S, Satchimps, Satchimps, Maybe it's his last name. I don't know. Or maybe his uh, name is Steve Anderson, and he loves chimps. Anyway, this guy sent in, wants me to choose between Cheap Trick and Boston. Now, if you, don't, if you forget how this works, you send these in, and I have to decide on the spot uh, which band I like more than the other. Uh, it's it's a very often a Sophie's Choice situation, and that's kind of what this is here, Cheap Trick and Boston. I like both of them very, very much. Um, uh, I, I had the pleasure of hanging out with Robin Zander one night at the uh, Holiday Star Theater. Uh, he was in the big venue with his band called Cheap Trick, and I was in the small venue called the Comedy Cottage. And uh, but afterwards, there was uh, the resort had a a uh, uh, kind of an island themed bar, and uh, somebody said, uh, "Hey, Robin, that's the guy who was the comedian." And he said, "Oh, is that right?" And then Robin Zander, uh, I couldn't shake him. I couldn't shake Robin Zander. Uh, and, and, uh, so I, I hung out all night with Robin Zander, um, at a, a tiki style sort of bar in Merrillville, Indiana. But you know what? Very nice man. Uh, equally nice, Rick Nielsen, who owns a pizza shop in Chicago. I want to say Peace Pizza is what it's called. When he was a guest on the Conan O'Brien program, he heard that I was from Chicago. He said, hey, are you from Chicago? I said, yeah, as a matter of fact, we're doing a live show there. Uh, my award-winning podcast, Never Not Funny, is doing a live show at the Congress Mexico Theater. And he said, well, you must come into my pizza place afterwards on me. And so 20 of us went to his restaurant and uh, he picked up the tab. How nice is that? What has Boston ever done for me? Not that. They had never bought me pizza. I'll tell you that. I never hung out with Tom Scholl's in an island-themed tavern. So who do you think wins this? Do they both have great songs? Of course they do, right? More than a feel. By the way, if you ever if you get yourself a new turntable and new speakers, uh, you want to put on more than a feeling to test your speakers out. I don't know why. That is just the perfect song to hear if you uh, if you have your uh, speakers positioned correctly. Uh, I'm sure somebody else goes, well, what about something by Moby? Fine, whatever you want. I'm just telling you that in my uh, experience, more than a feeling by Boston is the way to go with that. Um, because they bought us pizza, it's cheap trick over Boston. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this week's Jimmy's Records and Tapes. If you liked it, hit the like button. Don't forget about that Spotify set list. Playlist, I guess they call them over there. Uh, check that out. Uh, Jimmy's Records and Tapes is what you want to search for. Of course, I'm on Twitter at Jimmy Pardo. And I host the award-winning podcast, Never Not Funny. Until next time, the record is back in its sleeve. <laughs>